A very good afternoon to everyone and thank you for joining the Salesforce Masterclass today. Uh, it's a great topic that we are going to listen to. Um, very interesting for a small business owners to understand how to keep your business moving forward. It's a very tough time for everyone. We all know what, what kind of uh, situation the whole the world is facing, especially India where we have maximum number of SMEs. Uh, what kind of struggles we are facing. So a topic, a topic like how to keep moving a business forward is a boon to all the SMEs and to listen to the experts that uh, in few minutes that we are going to listen to. In these uncertain times, the challenge is to keep the business growth in the right direction. To do that, you need to move forward as daily routines and ways of doing business are changing dramatically. There are plenty of things to be done to keep business in motion across boundaries and in the, across businesses and industries how to embrace the positive be customer centric through various channels how to delegate manage your suppliers employees peers uh, continue to network via social media and last but not the least maintain your mental and physical health very important to keep cool balance your business and your personal and make sure the business keeps move, moving forward Taking care of your employees, which are which are the assets of your company. So, we would like to thank Salesforce to giving this opportunity today to to give this wonderful uh, you know a program to all the SMEs in the in the country. So, while we have invited as many, there are many um, you know challenges the SMEs face to attend, or they might be finishing some work, and a lot of people are still joining. Uh, thank you for for everyone who have put in their efforts and in, in um, uh, you know joining today's session. Uh, while we start, there are certain households I would like to like to inform you all. Uh, on your right hand side, if you can see, raise hand. Uh, during the presentation, please don't interrupt uh, the speaker or the the the, uh, the session. Uh, they will definitely give you an opportunity for you to ask a question. Please raise your hand by clicking the raise hand. And in case if you want to ask any specific question, there is a chat box or a question. You can please uh, type in your details in there, and definitely we will address that. So, coming back um, to the uh, session, uh, a quick introduction on Salesforce. Uh, Salesforce is the is the top cloud-based software company headquartered in San Francisco, California. It it provides the uh, the customer relationship management service and also provides a complementary suite of uh, enterprise application focused on customer service, marketing automation, analytics, and application development. Uh, Salesforce customer relationship management services several broad categories: customer cloud, sales cloud, service cloud, uh, manufacturing cloud, analytics, um, and IoT. They have more than 100,000 customers worldwide. When you use Salesforce CRM. To manage contacts and sales activities, you will increase win rates by more than 26%, boost sales productivity by 36%, and get 30% more than 30% increase in, in your sales revenue. So, discover how Salesforce is committed to your success. Learn how Salesforce can help you find, win, and keep your customers grow. A fantastic session. Please don't miss out. Stay till the end because they are going to listen to so many interesting. Uh, Aspects or interesting solutions, how uh, the whole session can help you, including the topic keep your business moving forward. So, this session is definitely uh, a must, I would say, for every entrepreneur in, in today's business. So, I will quickly take you through the session. Uh, what is the agenda today? So, uh, Zain, can you just uh, get on to the next slide, please? The next one. Next one. The agenda. So, um, after my introduction uh, for for today's program, uh, our masterclass will be directed by Mr. Fani uh, Patamata. He's a business mentor. Uh, I'll definitely introduce him um, before I could um, uh, we, we could start the session. Followed by Mr. Uh, Fani, we have Mr. Sanjeev Saha, who's a regional director, uh, emerging small and medium businesses at Salesforce. Uh, he's going to talk quickly on what Salesforce uh, can offer you and how. Uh, this can help your business. So, this being a masterclass, um, you know, we will go with uh, these two speakers for about one, one next one, one and a half hours, uh, followed by the thank you note, and uh, the session ends by around 5 30. 
definitely you can have a networking session at the Adri Social Launch. And uh, please feel free to ask your questions. Uh, as I said, put your question in the chat, or if you want to ask directly, please raise your hand, and we'll give access to ask questions to the to the uh, speakers today. So um, I would like to welcome um, our today's uh, masterclass, uh, you know, teacher. I would say. Uh, Mr. Fani Patamata. He is a business mentor. He is an accomplished business leader and entrepreneur by choice with a passion for nurturing new entrepreneurs and next gen startups. A CEO, coach, and a business mentor focused on grooming leaders for robust growth and execution strategies. His specialty is mentoring startups, startup incubators, running entrepreneurship development initiatives. His focus sectors are food services, applied AI, and higher education. He is a super mentor for incubator CEOs through program conducted jointly by Wadwani Foundation, Venture Fast Track, Asal Innovation Mission, and Millen Belinda Gates Foundation. Additionally, he is also a mentor of change at Asal Innovation Mission. Volunteered, volunteers as mentor, advisor at many incubators, in, including T Hub, CSIC, and Task Hyderabad, and other associations. Previously, he was with, he is a regional director at Randstad India and a former uh, former uh, country business head at Adico. His specialty is setting up new businesses, scaling up companies. His entrepreneurial journey started in 1998, and he co-founded a tech company, which he successfully exited in, in uh, 2001 via an acquisition by Boston-based uh, system integrator. Today, his company is listed on, on BSE and NSE with uh, successful operations in four to five years. So topic is uh, keep your business moving forward. So let's welcome Mr. Fani. Uh, Mr. Fani, over to you. Good afternoon, uh, Dojo, and uh, thank you so much. Uh, we see uh, a lot of people joining in, like uh, Dojo had mentioned, and uh, also uh, thanks to a big thanks to uh, Salesforce, uh, uh, who is trying to help and support all of us through initiatives such as these, uh, along with the aspiring uh, Aspire Media. So I will try and share my screen. Uh, it has a small PPT that I tried making for uh, for this session, but nevertheless, uh, I would like to uh, depart from uh, two instructions which uh, Dojo you have given us. Uh, one is if there is a question, you know, you can disturb me. Uh, but it also is good if. Uh, as we are proceeding and progressing towards the discussion, if something comes to mind, quickly use the chat window, put that question there. So whenever I see it or I pause for uh, you know, support, uh, I'll, I'll use those questions to also you know, discuss those points. But be specific, uh, try and you know, give me uh, that one question which I can answer. Uh, your introduction and other details we can do during the networking uh, time, which is specified towards the end. Uh, so don't uh, send your company introduction in the chat window. It may be cluttering other uh, questions that are genuine and somebody is asking us. So with that said, uh, all of us have gotten used to uh, this way of working in the last uh, year or more than a year. Uh, thanks for joining in uh, on a Thursday afternoon, uh, post-lunch. I'm sure uh, it's tough to get into a class, as uh, Aspire Media wants to call it. Uh, but you know, this is the message uh, that, if you remember in the olden days, uh, when somebody is in a distress or you know, they want some message to go across uh, and seeking help, they used to send it in a bottle across the seas, I was told, uh, so, so that we read. Now, these messages today, uh, we are seeing them more and more in our uh, social media and everywhere else in the chat windows. Uh, we are overwhelmed, but still, sometimes when businesses are disrupted so very badly, just like how it happened in the last one year or so, uh, we still may have to go back to our basics and send our distress messages probably in a bottle so that somebody out there wants to really see and help us understand how to really keep our business moving forward and by embracing the positive and you know, all that that is put up in this uh, 
uh, poster that you came up uh, in your social media or wherever you saw this poster at joint decision thank you for joining you are all heroes uh, you are the people who are running an enterprise or want to be uh, entrepreneur or start a small business or whatever that you do uh, currently and you know you are aspiring to do uh, we'd like to in the next 40 minutes or so spend time to see what are those aspects maybe they are all there in our head but have we really considered and seen uh, during tough difficult times like this you know this is one of those often used term in the last one year or plus that is unprecedented right so i think we heard it more number of times than the number of uh, covid cases that are raising currently in our country uh, multiple setbacks could be because of a complete lockdown business was disrupted for a few of us uh and therefore you know there was a setback or it could be a health uh, personally or someone in the family someone that we know has really gone through this health crisis and we had seen it so closely and probably that kept us worried uh, through the year or there could be a personal setback you know some of us have really gone through difficult times uh at family because of reduced income levels or this or that some of us uh, who were working would have lost jobs somebody in the family would have actually you know gone through a personal crisis so we have seen all of these right in this uh, one year and then there is this financial crisis you know world over uh, india had reported negative growth in the quarter and you know world across board we had seen the graph not looking like this what microsoft had provided me this icon but it is actually going down for many of us and these are the ones which can in one slide if you really think and segregate uh, what happened in the last 15 months any one of these could have happened to us any one issue could have actually you know brought us to this room uh, thinking you know how can i really keep my business moving forward but what did we do or what was it that we are all told to do right so many of us heard these things right someone said use this time to learn a skill uh, why don't you just join a course course or run something why don't you just go and uh, add another certificate for yourself or the whole world including uh, our own prime minister and everyone else said you know why don't you do yoga at home right while you are locked up lockdown or you know when you are not really going to your work and many of us would have also heard this right conserve cash increase your runway you know these are all the business land lingo that we heard save uh, money and then you know there are people around us asking what about me you know i'm not able to really uh, i'm not able to go out and you know my father who is 77 kept asking me Hey, when can I really step out and see, you know, breathe the fresh air? You know, I've been locked in this house for so many months. So everybody came back and you know sought or kept asking these questions while ours else really didn't have any answers. And the mind kept telling us, you know, why don't you take some rest? You know, this could be one of those vacations you got after probably uh, you graduated, right? So you never took rest. So this is probably the time for you. And I mean, what is it that we really wanted, right? So sometimes it is important to sit back, go back to the drawing board, like that message in a bottle. Go back and do it the old-fashioned way of writing it down, jotting it down on a whiteboard, or putting it on a piece of paper. You know, make sense of what's going on in our mind. Draw those boxes, you know, and those flowcharts which we used. then we were originally creating this business plan or whatever right so those are things that you know probably one of us can always go back and do but the key has always been in the last one year all of us learned that we need to continuously communicate whatever is running in our heads whatever is going on in our mind uh, it shouldn't bog us down if the mind shouldn't take us into the negative spiral the best way to uh 
keep the mind agile and active and engaged is to con- continue to communicate right so whether it is a plan that is running in our head or on the paper communicate to a few people you know bounce bounce these ideas with a few people communicate with the vendors with those partners negotiate contracts you know many of those are sure some of us would have already done that organize you know the house itself you know the way you would have added a lot of goods and stuff declutter or go to the office whenever the unlock happened in august or september some of us would have actually gone back and reorganized you know table either se udhar move kar diya we did something we organized or even teams and people and you know the way in which the business is being conducted in the past some of us would have organized but the idea is obviously not to panic and how will people know that we are not in a panic situation because we communicate you know the more and more we communicate the more and more positive or solution oriented communication that we did we seem to be getting this energy to go back and do something more you know get back to work uh, do the way, uh, new way you know when you're doing things or go back and talk to customers see many of us know right it is not that we have not lost our customers but the customer love they still love uh, the quality products or the solutions or services that we offered them in the past uh, imagine our own selves we would have stopped ordering food over swiggy for a while that doesn't mean we are a lost customer for swiggy or our love for ordering food on swiggy is lost it is only that we are trying to be a little safe and trying to stay away from it because it is not supposed to be done but whenever the swiggy and the other service have started i am sure people could have started ordering uh, food over uh, swiggy like a, like in a vengeance uh, and got uh, more and more food into their uh, uh, dining rooms and you know started having them so it is not the customer love but the way in which we ordered the or the reasons for which kept us uh, close to swiggy would have changed today we will probably go and you know click that restaurant which says i will give you a safe uh, food because I, my preparation is much safer or uh, there's a no no contacts uh, you know delivery that i can uh, give you and hence we feel safe in our mind and because of which we tend back towards our original behavior of ordering from swiggy but with extra care and with extra uh, riders on top of uh, the same orders that we do similarly our own customers in our own businesses it is not that they don't want our product or they don't want our services but they want this delivered in a new way in a changed manner in which they expect safety uh, the precautions and what have you right so those are all the things that will always come back but for which we still have to communicate who are these people that we are communicating to many of these stakeholders i just put a long long list but i'm sure i would have missed a few uh, you can add some more or probably if i missed any you can use the chat window to you know type in uh, what i missed out there and thanking you i will uh, continue to add them into my uh, communication next time but it is employees our customers more important the customers definitely suppliers vendors contractors subcontractors partners or landlord with the rental agreements service providers right so all of us would have gone and parked our uh, uh, wifi connection or the broadband connectivity or something else in the office that we are not using right and very importantly our own investors uh, the financiers the bankers so we need to really go and tell them that you know hey this is what we are going through but They, they 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 all understand because everybody is going through the same uh, cancer so this is one of those that's the reason why we call it unprecedented everybody has gone through these three or four issues in their own uh, personal business or 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 you know health or uh, financial uh, side of uh, the crisis right so everybody understands and empathizes and there are a few changing rules mostly to do with the lockdown and lockdown this and that plus some of the compliances some of the statutory 
maybe go back to that uh, company secretary or, or chart accountant and ask hey what what else should i know because this is going to be march uh, end of march that i need to submit my document so what else should i know as a business owner right so that's but did anything change is there a new world may or may not be but you know we'll continue to live with all these people you know all those stakeholders some names would have changed some pl- suppliers we would have changed or we negotiated or some of them would have unfortunately gone out of business so we would have got a newer uh, supplier or we would have ourselves discarded a few geographies so you know we would have created uh, new geographies where our business model works so uh, i mean some partners would have changed here and there but we'll continue to live with all of them uh, in our businesses yes hybrid is the new normal as you know microsoft wants to say it uh, i don't know if one of you have gone through the recent uh, article by uh, uh, microsoft uh, ceo he says people will not return from remote to the old way of uh, working in the office because some people will still some roles will still continue to be remote for a very long time or permanently for example and some of those roles will definitely have to be in the office uh, working in person meeting uh, people uh, the customer facing roles or probably the data center or service delivery roles in uh, case of microsoft but so what it means is business will have a few roles we can always say these are can, these can continue to be remote work related uh, activities and some of those which need in person in the office kind of work so it wouldn't be the old normal but in the new normal we need to create certain hybrid way of working which means there have there has to be a few changes which means there has to be a certain way of uh, reworking uh, you know doing things differently so what are our considerations so each one of us will have different considerations based on our own context our own situation our own business or our own you know clientele expectation customer expectations etc but i try putting down at least a few of them uh in the normal circumstance uh, what we do is you know we kind of uh, survey these uh, we ask people uh, what are these considerations and you know which are those that they are uh, doing to keep their businesses intact or to get their business into a newer uh, trajectory uh, a newer uh, goal setting or whatever so what is it that we are doing so before i step into talking about these considerations do uh, do is it a right time to do a poll or a survey right now or uh, we'll do it after some time um you can continue maybe another 5 uh, 10 minutes we'll conduct the poll okay and if there are any questions in the chat because you know when i'm presenting i'm not able to see the uh, platform um there's no questions right now mr pani you can okay. continue so i will move on then thank you so but continue to keep your uh, questions in the chat window so that we can address them whenever we take a pause so what are my considerations so all of us would have definitely noticed in the remote way of working or when, during the lockdown or during the time when we were going through the crisis certain uh, people that we never realized within our office or within our business or within our work sphere or even at home uh, that we never considered them to be having certain leadership qualities but we would have realized oh this individual or she seems to be really good at this you know i never knew that uh, she knows uh, for example you know getting zoom connectivity or your uh, you know remote working uh, way of doing or social media postings or you know doing things in a remote mode some newer uh, leaders would have emerged in our own businesses because in the past when we didn't need those skills we never i mean those, those were never used in the in the company and hence those individuals we never recognized that they had those skills which were useful now 
in the last one year or you uh, know from whenever uh, we, i think 22nd or 24th of march is when we all went through that lockdown in the country and certain new leaders or new skills uh, people with the new skills we would have identified and now in this uh, new remote or hybrid way of working can we utilize these people to do some more you know meaningful tasks or give them some additional responsibilities make them accountable for something so now that is you know one of those considerations uh, did we really identify did we see this happening in our company or in our work space and therefore empower somebody uh, within the company right so that's one of those right i don't really want to read all of them uh, but there will be certain you know dependencies within the organization for example there may be a redundant set of people doing the same work and during lockdown when we are stretched uh, and strained to be able to deliver or you know get things done faster uh, we ourselves as a business owner or you know as a business leader would have uh, crossed and you know seen uh, reduce these dependencies and directly would have gone to that one person who is actually acting on the ground who knows the real nuances of that uh, work and directly interacted with them so which means the layers that we would have built in the hierarchy or in the teams some of them would have actually become not necessary to continue to do uh, work because uh, over over years we would have created these dependencies or someone to whom we used to type a letter i am talking about a very old economy kind of an organization where people dictate a letter and someone else goes and types it and the third person who reviews the content and brings it back to uh, the boss man and the boss man you know finally says okay this letter can be sent now during the lockdown we would have really sat at our own laptops and typed our own letters so is it that a dependency that you know we don't need any longer and these are you know certain things that we can do ourselves so some of these we would have realized in the last one year which we didn't have time to realize because of various reasons right so we do a lot of customer meetings and out of office work and a lot of times that we are not at a desk that all the desk work was actually offloaded to somebody else in the past now that you know 24 by 7 we are sitting at our desks there so many things that we could have done much faster much easier and uh, with less errors than were it to be in the past right so these are a couple of examples and then wasteful resources the services the subscriptions which we didn't need you know the newspapers that you nobody know, read in the office but they're just lying uh, waste papers uh, in the front office so many of these you know in the last one year or at least six or seven months or whatever number of months of uh, lockdowns we would have realized that you know this never made any difference to the organization but only had cost it could be small it could be just 150 rupees of uh, newspaper subscription but you know the days when we were uh, trying to conserve cash i i call it uh, uh, dignified frugality right so we were frugal but we were dignified about it because we were, we were cutting down what is not necessary we are being right in doing you know these aspects uh, many of us and uh, which i'm sure you know all of us would have seen a direct result in terms of media companies really uh, going digital and not able to continue with their printed uh, publisher uh, published uh, versions some of them are really really you know going bust uh, with use uh, print media themselves uh, but yes i mean that's the reality uh, so that's that's life for us and then like i said in the uh, in the previous slide also new partners new service providers somebody you know would say because of this lockdown i can't and in that particular territory or geography for you and why did you find in other when the bureau uh, all done a lot of tanzo uh, delivery uh, in the, uh, recent one year uh, which served our purpose better than that individual courier guy who used to come and pick up uh, from us and take it and deliver after 3 days and give us that uh, pod and all of those right so so these are all things which changed for a for a reason and and you know then therefore you know how can i really 
operate asset life, right? So reduce uh, office spaces, for example, or I don't know the furniture which was not uh, used for a year. So many of these. I mean, these are just top five uh, that is there, and there are a few more, right? So talent pipeline, you know, probably new research to identify newer partners, uh, digital technologies and workflow management tools should be invested there. You know? um, many things seem to be happening using tech more and less of paper and uh, mail, email trail and all of that. So should we really simplify the way we work uh, by getting more and more CRM and you know, other digital uh, tools to manage our work so that people are sitting in the remote but I need to know every hour how productive uh, these people are. So do I get some tools which will tell me whether they made those 25 calls they're supposed to make today uh, or not? And did they record uh, their work uh, which they're supposed to do this week or not? And because they're at uh, their home, it's not like they're in the office and we can call them to a conference room and you know, review their uh, day or a weekly work. Uh, now it is supposed to be done remotely and if we have multiple people under us, we can't keep calling everybody all through the day. And then with all this changed uh, situation, uh, is there any requirement for us to raise for new capital because some of the losses and some of the downtime that we had in our businesses. So how do we really uh, position ourselves? to be able to raise this new capital itself, you know, which is also very important uh, uh, for running businesses. Now, the most important, at least at a business owner level or a business leader's level, what are my strategic directions for the next three years? You know, what are the two things that, we, that I wish to do, uh, which will make my business more meaningful, attract my customers, bring those old customers back, and still give them or be able to give them the same uh, quality of service because of which they were buying uh, from us in the past. And then are there any new emerging markets you know, that I'm probably not able to see in the past? Now is becoming more and more clear for me. You know, is there a new geography which requires my products? Or fundamentally, should I pivot my product itself or a solution itself? and deliver something else, you know, maybe the customer needs something else and some of the many examples, there was, I'm sure all of you, all of us know this uh, company called Cabin Care, which uh, delivers that chick shampoo, remember that one rupee uh, shampoo uh, sachets, now suddenly this man uh, with the pandemic and the health crisis uh, uh, had seen to use the same sachets and the same packing material and the same uh, machinery that he's got to start uh, delivering uh, sanitizers in those, you know, small sachets. Now, I'm sure, you know, some of us who travel would have already seen them in Indigo and other places uh, where the, the sanitizer sachets actually come from this company Kevin Care. Now, that's a new product and that's a new strategy and that, that was required. Uh, and Chick Shampoo could never have ever sold in an Indigo flight. Uh, probably, you know, that was in-flight selling has never been Kevin Care's original uh, market. And Kevin Care would have seen, uh, would have actually acquired that uh, new marketplace called uh, in-flight uh, sales through uh, uh, sanitizer such. So imagine these things. I mean, these are game changers for uh, some of us. I'm sure many of us uh, are reading such stories. Uh, a plastic manufacturer, you know, getting into uh, creating uh, something related to uh, hospital equipment. Or, uh, so many of these, and there are many apparel uh, manufacturers who would have, uh, I mean, I, I remember Jockey, uh, the, uh, the company which uh, supplies briefs and vests, uh, is suddenly started uh, uh, supplying masks. Right, so using the same uh, you know clothing material and wasted uh, material, I think they would have actually created these masks, uh, which is 
a new market uh, for them and this is a new product uh, and a new market that people identify uh, when we going back to our drawing boards sometimes it's good to really create a business plan for those uh, new products and new markets maybe sell to the same set of customers but a different other product or a different other solution so these are all possibilities and when we do this there has to be a renewed uh, marketing strategy uh, which will suit this new product or a revised uh, product and therefore there is a revised uh, business model around it maybe there is a digital communication platform itself that is required which will suit this particular new business model and then a new set of people you know to align uh, to these uh, new way of working or we have to hire a new people or retrain existing uh, staff to be able to deliver this uh, new products and new businesses and lastly i'm sure in all of us uh, have already thought about how do we uh, introduce workplace apps uh, you know the remote way of working so all of these are considerations that we all have gone through right so this is uh, where i would like to pause but these are 25 of them uh, i'm sure not all of us they, all of them are applicable to everyone and a few of them are definitely useful uh, for somebody to go back and think and in fact it is always good to really go back and uh, do a new plan uh, using the current situation to be able to get the same customer attraction and uh, utilize the same uh, resources in a hybrid manner of uh, uh, part, part of the roles are high, uh, remote and part of the roles are in the office or probably facing the customer or whatever and then how does it look for us and that's where i again want to pause uh, if those of you want to take up the poll at this point and i just have two or three more slides after this yes uh, we'll do that um uh, rahil uh, like to run the first uh, question on the poll uh, can we can we uh, run the question uh, the first poll yes sir okay okay um so we got the first question and these are some of those you, uh, which you can answer in the poll yeah have you have you digitized uh, have you digitalized your business in the past one year so we have an so uh, no question and the the answer is 80% yes and 20% no okay the poll is already run yeah so uh, there's a scope of digitization as well when okay. for the rest of the 20 thank you thank you for that yeah. thank you so right. you country thank you 80% is good uh, yes so we we'll go back uh, probably you know for the last closing uh, from my side So I still don't see any questions though in the chat window, but uh, based on all these considerations, right? So based on all these questions that crop up in the in our mind, and some of them are very basic, but some of them are important in terms of uh, trying to uh, think deep within our business con in our business context within our own uh, sphere of what we do. and see how we can apply some of those in fact i am asking those to send this as a survey after this uh, session is over probably in the next week or uh, two so that we can really answer and you know come back and see what we wish to do and you know see a possibility if we can really help one of you re- achieve what you set out or you know what you haven't really considered uh, because going by what's going on right now i think we are all in for this co covid world as people are calling it now for a very long haul it's not going to go away. we can't wish it away saying that you know it's thing of the past so the new changed more normal we are all going to work very differently uh, so these are the top three considerations which came to my mind uh, 
there probably yes is a business rigid that is required by an SME or by a company or by an entrepreneur or even by a business leader who is working in a corporate or a company uh, within their own sphere of uh, work uh, to be able to reimagine the new uh, customer demand or the new market demand as uh, we call it uh, and rejig their own business model right to suit the newer and newer demands before we kind of uh, uh, become uh, extinct or you know somebody outpaces us uh, because we are still not wanting to rejig our own way of working or doing a newer business or whatever. So that's one of the top considerations. We can look at all the products, all the services, all the solutions, all the business lines or all the SKUs of whatever in our own uh, businesses and see what can change, what we can keep and what we can discard based on the newer customer demands or the newer market demands uh, or, or enhance or redevelop to suit the new market demand. So this is uh, point number one which needs a deeper thinking. One needs to really go back to the drawing board. There are frameworks, there are tools that are available to be able to do this. And there are definitely mentors or coaches who can really work with your company or your business for some time, in a few months or few weeks along with you to be able to define this for you as an external uh, person uh, looking and giving you a orientation uh, to be able to change a few things, shift gear here and there to be able to come back on track, right? So that's one of those. And when we are doing that, obviously, you know, as a parallel effort and an activity, we also need to, uh, within this business model, uh, we need to really align the people and also align uh, the people to the products or the new product. So, which means not just the business model suit, suitable to the new market demands or the new customer demands or the customer's new demands, uh, so to say. Uh, people also have to be retrained, realigned and uh, coached to be able to work on this newer product offerings within your own company. So, which is again, you know, uh, certain help from uh, HR uh, coaches or HR mentors, you know, who will be able to sit with uh, your business leaders or probably with you yourself and then define these uh, uh, standard, uh, uh, the, these, you know, newer uh, training and you know, coaching uh, models for you, uh, which will put your new business model uh, or the revised business model into action. So this, this is the second uh, topic. Now the third one is obviously, uh, it's a big piece and you know, like the uh, poll result also said, 80% of the people in this room itself are saying it's important, uh, is to have a new digital strategy itself to suit this business, right? Even if I don't change anything at all, uh, I'm not too sure if I will still be able to get those 16 uh, sales boys or sales girls or, or those you know sales executives uh, to go on the field and do the field work and get us those orders or the leads which can convert over a period. So I don't know if that model still is viable in the given uh, circumstances and with the health crisis and people not uh, wanting to step out uh, some of them. Uh, so which means you know is there a digital strategy? That we can quickly uh, adapt, uh, adopt to our uh, suit our uh, business, uh, through which we can attract newer and more customers quickly. I mean that's one of those. And then with this remote or hybrid way of working, how do I capture these people's uh, delivery or you know the daily activities or weekly uh, deliverables or targets or KPIs? And so all these, how do I attract them? And how do I know whether those 50 or 100 or you know, five uh, 
field the executives that i have in service or in sales or in customer uh, delivery or whatever uh, you know type of work that they do for us what is it that they doing you know all those 8 hours or 9 hours when they are remotely reporting uh, to work so is there a way that i can really track their performance and therefore it aligns with the business model the people uh, alignment and capacity building and then the digital strategy which meets all these goals and trains everybody into using and uh, delivering work in that manner so this is in essence uh, is something that uh, in my mind the top three considerations if we really put all those 25 together and churn them and you know, bring it out of uh, uh, bring out uh, the best three right so this if it is uh, and then how who will help me and you know is there a way of uh, really getting these uh, three things done from my own company or from my own uh, business line or, or whatever you know sphere of work that you are doing right? so that's that's the key and you know the reason why i use this way of uh, talking to you today is to see that if in, if, if we are in alignment with this fine and then uh, uh, the questions could be so what are the frameworks or tools that i can use to be able to do a business rejig uh, to align to my new market so who's going to do that survey for me how am i going to you know collect that data etc or uh, yes i have my plan ready i am already i already know what i am going to do for the next 2 3 years in this way of uh, working but i agree funny yeah yeah i think you know my people needs to be trained and aligned into this way of working so what should i do uh, is there someone uh, who can help me here that could be a second uh, requirement for some of you or say yes i know that we need to invest in digital and you know i need, i need to really go through a strategy to suit my own business because my business is very unique it is very different from probably selling uh, it product or you know, b2b or b2c or b2c consumer uh, sales i do something very 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 different and uh, how should i think of a digital strategy will it work yes millions of followers doesn't mean cash in the bank so how do i really you know fix these two uh, things together how do i work that out now these are all the questions and dilemmas i'm sure uh, we must be going through or if it is not us in this uh, meeting it is probably one of your partners in your business or you know some of your other advisors or board members or you know somebody else you know who also has uh, vote and decision making authority with your business maybe having these you know questions in their head so i wouldn't have all answers during this session itself but with the help of uh, sp media with the help of sales force uh, that are partnering this session uh, and you know with uh, some of your uh, interest we can always <coughs> always probably identify what we can do uh, to suit your own uh, business requirements and uh, last we have the digital adoption itself uh, you know i just want to leave you with a sense of why it is important i mean this is just uh, you can always google india's uh, you know digital adoption uh, then you will find this but these are the specific reasons right so we are i think in terms of internet subscriptions and smartphone devices i think we are growing faster than any other country today and then you know the unique advantage that we have is you know having close to a billion plus population using one identification number and that's huge and these are the two reasons why uh, we can really invest money into capture and you know be able to get across to those uh, people who, who we can who can be our potential customers right and uh, we are also really uh, one of those countries with a cheaper uh, data rates right and then uh, there's, there's an affordability and you know, the gb per month consumption is high uh, as opposed to other countries and then i'm sure not this i don't know whether it includes uh, the time spent on social media during the lockdown uh, but definitely you know 
17 hours per week is a long time a lot of time that people are actually spending on social media so how do we really you know use these advantages uh, to grow our own business right by adopting uh, and, and and spending some money uh, in this direction right so how do i do that so like a, any business plan or any business uh, uh, new thing that we wish to do we always use a model canvas uh, all of you can google a business model canvas you will find lot of versions for each and every requirement that uh, you want how do i reaching my business and you know what is business model canvas you can always get one you can download one and use that put on a a0 chart put it up on your wall use your uh, stick notes to uh, really uh, create a plan for yourself and it's your plan and those stick notes you know you can always remove and put a new one so other man so use that and this is one that is made specifically for an sme wanting to go digital right and then invest in digital and why should i do that and so i mean this is somebody's uh, uh, model canvas uh, when they use what are the various uh, advertising online advertising uh, spaces that i need to invest in you know why do i need it do want to do it what is the value proposition you know what is the cost what is the revenue you know all those uh, put in uh, one uh, canvas and then keep looking at it and it might be useful if it is not suitable for us the key resources are different for me the customer relationships are you know something else for me or the my segments are very different change it that's your model canvas it's up to you right so that's the beauty of a model canvas but frameworks like this or formats like this will be useful for us to really be able to think have we considered all these aspects while i'm making my plan and therefore to a large extent the plan will be robust and it has it it, it is fail safe so you know it, it may not fail right but execution is always the key and you know that i'm sure if you are in business for whatever number of years that you are in and uh, you are good at execution so i'm sure you will make it to happen for yourself so that's it so what's your response uh, this is my number this is my email id i'm sure dojo will be able to uh, help us with uh, my number i'm stopping to share uh, for now uh, is there any questions uh, and that's um, it dojo i will turn it over to you before we shift to yep. any questions thank you thank you fanny um, we haven't uh, heard any questions so far uh, but i think uh, before um the last uh, we will ask one more question uh, on the poll i mean uh, rahil if you can run the that last poll yeah yeah oh, that's uh, that question is is uh, for a good response uh, are you looking for a digital transformation journey in your organization in the next 6 months and the answer is 83% says yes and uh, 17% no well that 17% no could be of many doubts or clarification probably mr sanjeev we can help them uh, you know come out of that thank you very much uh, so thank you mr fani for that uh, wonderful session uh, very informative the last slide was brilliant uh, and avenue that there are 1.2 billion other registered people in india so i think uh, that's a very successful move from the government side as well uh, so plus a lot of other info that you shared was um, quite informative and uh, a great takeaway for for the team today before we get into mr sanjeev's uh, 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 presentation uh, we would like to offer um, all the uh, people who have registered today a free uh, subscription to small enterprise digital issue for one year uh, a quick um, you know uh, info about uh, the small enterprise um, zain can you just upload the slide that uh, the ppt of item 4 and 5 thank you dojo thank you sanjeev thank you mr fani thank you thank you so um 
Small Enterprise uh, is a website uh, created to help SMEs, uh, you know, micro, small, and medium entrepreneurs. So this was started in 2010. Um, it's almost uh, 11, 12 years that we started the, the whole uh, you know journey. Um, we've been supported by industry uh, uh, leaders uh, who are trying to make the entire ecosystem uh, more robust and uh, helping those SMEs who want to grow their business forward. So any uh, sort of education which is required to run a business is being helped by small enterprise by enlightening them on whether it's a technology session or more uh, technology, how they want to use the technology for the business, or if they want to know more about banking and finance or logistics or marketing, uh, mentoring, all those things have been shared by small enterprise for the last 11, 12 years. We also, uh, the magazine format, I mean, which is coming out every month, um, Zane, can you just put the next? So this is, this is a small enterprise magazine, which is uh, being published every month. We have a, a cover story every month to share whether every every month, every issue have got a separate cover story on banking and finance, the woman in business, marketing and so on, technology for small business. So everyone will be uh, will be getting a, a copy, uh, a subscription of uh, Small Enterprise Magazine from next issue onwards for the whole one year. So thank you for, for joining today. Now, let me uh, introduce Mr. Sanjeev Zain. You can, you can uh, uh, stop the sharing. So uh, I would like to um, introduce uh, Mr. Sanjeev. Uh, Mr. Sanjeev Saha is a regional sales director at salesforce.com at India. So the topic that he's going to talk about is small business path to growth. Uh, a great topic, uh, helping small business uh, grow through the Salesforce uh, you know, programs and solutions. He's a dynamic professional with more than 18 years of experience in the areas of business development, sales and marketing, channel management, relationship management and key account management. Proficient in exploring and developing new markets, appointing channel partners, accelerating growth and achieving desired sales growth. Significant experience in working with customers and technical teams for securing and executing IT projects. So um, the topic once again is going to be on small businesses path to growth. So Mr. Sanjeev, over to you. Thank you, Dojo. I think, uh, you know, I'm really, really excited and th thanks a lot for having me here. Uh, thanks, Funny, for the wonderful session. Um, you know, I also liked that slide, which talked about 1.2 billion uh, un unique identity, uh, you know, uh, Indian uh, people who are using it. Uh, so, you know, as Dojo mentioned, I manage the SMB business for Salesforce in India. And uh, small and medium business has, has been uh, extremely crucial for uh, for all of us, right? It, it, it's, it's basically, it's very significant for India's economy. As we speak, uh, you know, the stats says, uh, as per the report, is, you know, uh, by 2024, 50% of the GDP will be contributed by small and medium business. So it becomes extremely imperative for us to stay tuned uh, it, uh, and, and make sure that you are always ahead of the curve. So uh, as you're aware that, you know, digital transformation slowly uh, takes over the business landscapes and SMBs are also required to adapt to the evolution uh, to ensure there is a business continuity and growth. Uh, in this context, they probably require cost-effective solution that drives scalability and, uh, and ensure, uh, you know, there is constant growth happening. Now, uh, you know, in this last one year, uh, it has completely changed uh, so many things, right, for SMB business as well. Uh, you know, uh, I exactly remember, uh, you know, uh, one year back when the lockdown was announced and I was talking to so many SMB customers, they had a lot of issues uh, initially, uh, you know, some of them uh, and because if, if the entire way of doing business changed. Uh, now, not only business, it changed our life as well. I still remember that I started uh, exploring my hands in cooking because I never used to do cooking. But, you know, what would, what would you do? Staying at home, working for so long, you need to help your uh, better halves. So I started doing uh, cooking. So it's it, the new way of learning new things. Similarly, I think there's a lot of change happened for SMB as well, where uh, th this entire wave of coming uh, online, digital, uh, you know, digital transformation, uh, making sure that you are uh, addressing to the customer's expectation because the entire expectation of a customer changed uh, in the last nine, 10 months, right? So uh, some of the challenges that we, uh, you know, I saw when I spoke to many uh, entrepreneurs, many startup CEOs uh, are, you know, maintaining financial growth. 
So it became extremely important the moment COVID hit us last year. How the SMB business, you know, uh, one of the challenges that they face is how do I maintain the financial growth of the company because of this pandemic which is affecting us, right? Uh, you know, how do I make sure that my company is more profitable? How do I make sure that, you know, I am addressing to customer's requirement? So meeting customer ex experience and expectation was the second challenge because every customer, uh, you know, which had probably, uh, which, who wanted an offline or face-to-face -face meeting, they completely changed. They said that, I, you know, everything has to be online. Uh, and that's the reason digital transformation became extremely important for small and medium business. And businesses had to change uh, to survive. Now, at one hand, we saw a lot of lot of industries, like, for example, industries like, you know, travel, transportation, you know, saw a huge, huge uh, dip in their, in their business. They're still recovering. But on the other hand, there are a lot of customers, a lot of businesses which actually saw, uh, you know, positive growth. And, you know, for example, a lot of online companies, e-commerce, uh, you know, uh, funny spoke about Dunzo, you know, so online delivery companies, they saw, they saw a huge opportunity uh, during pandemic, right? And the third challenge is that, they, that the SMB business faced was uh, scaling technology for growth because, uh, you know, the moment we spoke about online digitization, uh, digital transformation, technology plays a very critical and vital role. So how do we make sure that, you know, you, you select the right technology which can sustain your growth, not only, uh, you know, during the time of pandemic or probably next five years or seven years down the line, right? So that also became a huge challenge uh, for us. But, you know, uh, some of the, you know, we also observed some major trends in SMBs. Um, you know, SMBs actually prioritize customer safety and shift interactions as well. Uh, digital forward SMBs are better equipped to handle volatility. So we found that, uh, you know, SMBs who were actually digital ready were able to adapt to this change really, really fast. Uh, and then, you know, future crisis, you know, how do you make sure that we are prepared for the future crisis, uh, which is, you know, probably ahead of us. Now, you know, uh, one of the things which became extremely important and uh, so, so if, you, if you look at it for growth, uh, you know, for, for maintaining that sustainable growth, we have seen that growth is product of more than, you know, what we do and sell, right? It comes from a defined plan. Now, we at Salesforce, we have, um, you know, a process called V2 Mom, which we say as, uh, you know, um, uh, is probably a defined plan for how do we want to make sure that the company grows at the same rate uh, that we expect and we, you know, present at the market. So V2 Mom is nothing but, you know, it's vision, values, methods, obstacles, and metrics. So vision is what do you want? What is the vision that I have as an organization to go and do in next 12 months or next you know, two years? Values, what's important about it? You know, what are the values that I will be you know, uh, having to make sure that I achieve my vision? Methods, how do I, what are different methods and how do I get it uh, is basically methods. Obstacles uh, is what might stand uh, in the way of getting my vision and metrics, how will you know when you have it? Now, this is extremely important for each and every, uh, even for small business. If you, if you have a vision, if you have your values, your methods, your obstacles and measures, you will probably be much more, uh, you know, uh, foolproof in terms of, uh, if there's a pandemic getting affected uh, or hitting you, how are, how is your plan overall? How is it, what's, what's the obstacle that you're facing? And a pandemic can be one of the obstacles. How, how can you, you know, maneuver that to make sure that the business is growing? Now, you know, uh, all in all, Salesforce is, is completely a sales organization. Uh, as most of you are aware, we have solution which can completely automate your, uh, right from your customer acquisition to your, uh, you know, opportunity, uh, sales, uh, customer management, and then serving the customer once they become your customers, right? Now, uh, you know, Preparing for your growth journey, right? Uh, you know, there are certain things uh, as, as a sales professional that we should do, right? Uh, you know, some some of the studies which have said is actually 82% of the salesperson uh, are not aligned with the needs of their buyers. So, uh, you know, it is extremely important as a sales people uh, within your organization, if you have to grow, you need to understand your buyer really well. You need to make sure that you are not selling your 
uh, selling process, but you are understanding uh, the customer's buying process as well. So do you uh, do your due diligence is extremely important. Uh, you know, set yourself apart by doing your research, knowing your prospects, companies, industry, uh, competitors will allow you to ask the right question and tailor your message to their specific challenges. I think that's one of the thing which uh, which will probably help you to have a sustained growth. Uh, the second important piece for a salesperson uh, to be successful um, is is talk to the right person. Many a times, what happens is you know we are talking not at the top, we are talking mid level, um, and, and you know the all the information that the mid level management is giving uh, might be completely different from uh, the the uh, the CEO of the company. His vision will be much, you know completely different. So it's important to understand. It's important to always talk at the top, understand their vision, and map their vision based upon what product and solution that you have. Um, and then overall, uh, everything will fall in line. Uh, the third thing is prepare for objections. I think uh, customers will come come back come to you, have those objections. Uh, it, we at Salesforce follow this band category where basically we understand the budget of the customer, we understand whom are we talking to, authority of the customer. Uh, need if there is a need uh, if uh, you know customer has a need if there is a pain point that they are facing and the time uh, it's required uh, to you know probably buy a solution so we uh, you know follow this band category and it's extremely useful uh, the fourth thing is uh, you know uh, is always end with agreed next steps I think that's important uh, you know uh, you, when when you are having a discussion and we call it as a you know upfront contract when you when you are having or when you are showing your product uh, at the end if they like the product what's the next step always end end up with that i think that's important uh, uh, which will probably help you uh, in making sure that you are uh, forecasting your decision making of, of a deal is is absolutely correct now uh, you know these are certain things which uh, i thought i will probably uh, be speaking about uh, you know uh, in terms of um, making sure that you are having a sustainable growth in your organization um, you know, uh, Salesforce has different solutions which can help in your complete uh, digital transformation that you're looking for your organization. We have a lot of customers in SMB as we speak using the product. We have customers who have used uh, for one license, um, you know, for you know, managing the entire CRM. We have customers who have used for, you know, thousands of licenses also. So uh, with that, uh, you know, I would probably uh, hand it back to Dojo uh, and, and thanks a lot for having me here. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Sanjeev. Um, we would like to um, invite anyone who would like to ask a question, anything related to your business and uh, what uh, you know, what solution Salesforce uh, can bring into your business or anything else. Um, we'll also be sending a feedback form to everyone. So probably um, those who want to know more about uh, the Salesforce uh, solutions, you can also make a mark on that. Any specific uh, question that you want to ask uh, uh, to Mr. Fani, uh, please mark that in the in the feedback form. If you don't have any other you know, questions right now, um, so uh, thank you, Mr. Fani. Thank you, Mr. Sanjeev, for this wonderful session, and thank you, Salesforce, um, giving this opportunity to to share this information to the entire uh, you know uh, the community. Uh, thanks for everyone who joined today. Please stay tuned. We will have uh, from April onwards. We'll have a weekly session on on various uh, topics. Uh, so, uh, okay, Mr. Mr. Sanjeev has shared his email on the chat on the chat box. Uh, so please uh, feel free to reach out to him. Uh, so whatever solutions that they can give, uh, they're definitely more than happy to share that. Even Mr. Fani has uh, you know uh, shared the same uh, email. Uh, so you can always reach out to both of them. So thank you once again. And um, Mr. Sanjeev, you would you uh, like to say uh, last few uh, lines? Yeah, no, uh, I, I think I think thanks a lot, Dojo. It was it was a really really nice session. Uh, thank you for organizing this. Um, you know, people who have joined on online um, really want to thank uh, for spending time with us. Uh, it was a real pleasure interacting uh, uh, with all of you. Uh, as I said, please feel free to reach out. I have uh, sent my email ID. Um, you know, just drop an email and I'll probably address each and every question that you have. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, so thanks at the Aspire team uh, and thanks a lot, Fani, uh, for joining us as well. Thank you, Mr. Fani. Uh, I would, you would like to um, 
say a last few lines before we get into the session. Oh, well, thanks uh, very much, Dojo. It's a uh, it's always a pleasure coming back to Aspire uh, Media Sessions, uh, and uh, good meeting you, uh, Sanjeev, uh, and the rest of the team from Salesforce. And uh, for all the thirty odd participants you know, who've been uh, on the session uh, for the last one and a half hour or so. Uh, uh, good to know you all. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, this afternoon. Uh, uh, hope to see you soon. Uh, and stay safe, uh, stay indoors, and uh, work digital. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Pani. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mr. Sanjeev. Thank you, everyone. Uh, stay tuned for the for the next session, which is going to happen soon, and we will be informing all uh, about our upcoming sessions. So, the small enterprise magazine, the digital issue. Uh, we will start sending from the March edition onwards. That's uh, women in business. So you'll get it that for the next 12 issues. Uh, thank you, everyone, and. Uh